Hello, you guys. Welcome to the Demi Ramos Show. I'm Demi Ramos, and today's guest, we have the iconic Kim Shuey. <sighs> Um, one of the hottest designers in the world right now. Oh my gosh. Um, she is based in New York City, and we actually met. Um, I walked her show, and twice, right? I walked her show twice, yeah. and then yeah. Now we just talk about boys. That's dope. <laughs> so tell us the moment you knew you wanted to be a designer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I feel like I always knew I wanted to. I in sixth grade, the yearbook. End of the yearbook, there was you know this little caption you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And mine was like, I want to be like, I want to be a designer. Wow. Um, and so I kind of always had that. Um, but then I really went for it in 2016. Mm -hmm. Well, no, probably even earlier than that. I just was constantly working on different projects. Just nobody saw those things. And then 2016 was when my first like foot in the door kind of happened. Because before that, I think probably since forever, I was always working on different things, but there was no one really like looking at it. It was really hard to like get someone to, to figure out what was the right, you know, mix. So you always knew you wanted to design, but you just maybe didn't have an idea of what it looked like or what yeah. the vision was? Yeah, like I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I had this general vision, but I was just kind of putting in all the specifics. We're, your mom is so supportive of you. She's like front row every show. She <laughs> has your parents always been supportive of like supporting your career? I think they have been. Um, you know, initially they were all like, why would you do, why would you pick design? It's not stable. Like, can you actually support yourself with that? Um, but, you know, I took on other jobs at the beginning, um, working for other people. Wow. Um, just so that I could stabilize things, right? And then when my capsule collection when it looked like it could take off, that's when I actually made the move. Okay, so let's talk about V-Files. Yeah. So, yeah, what was that competition? It was like a competition. That was like the first competition. It was like an online internet, it's like crowdsourced competition where you just upload your work online. Are you serious? Yeah, and then they pick, and I applied like probably four times before I got it. No way. Yeah, I, up, I like uploaded it. You have to wait never like, give up, people. Never give up, because wow. you have to wait, like, I don't know, it was like four four or five months every time. And I kept on applying and I never got it. And then the fourth time I got like a DM and they were like, come, like you're one of the finalists. So I think it was like, you know, you never, you never give up. I mean, I had so many no's and I never took a no, I never took no for the answer because I was like, this is like my dream. Wow, okay. Yeah. Do you remember your first dress? What is your first like garment I ever look some like. crazy things you know sometimes I look back at even old collections and I'm like I really did that why did I do that really <laughs> yeah um because I like like a lot of like maximalist stuff like a lot of prints colors and patterns mm -hmm. and sometimes I go overboard with that um so I look back and I'm like whoa I did that <laughs> like how would you describe your style because it's so stable when you see a Kim Shui piece you really know that's Kim Shui I feel like I, um, it's like, there's a collage element. It's sexy. Mm -hmm. There's, there's just like a, a special mix and match between the prints and the colors that I think is specific to me. One thing I notice about, like, especially, I mean, all the girls in New York that I know, um, have watched your show or like have gone to your casting yeah. are so excited because a Kim Shuey piece is so, you really embody what a girl wants to look like when she goes out. You know, can she yeah. dress? Yeah, I feel like going out and like showing that off on social mm -hmm. is like so core to the, to the brand somehow, but that's also how it, it grew, right? It was like a, a brand that grew on the internet. Wow. So without the internet, there would be no today, right? So yeah. really like that co-creative, co-creation aspect is what's so interesting. When you're like making a dress. Yeah. Where do you even start? Do you like ask yourself, would I wear this? And then you go from there? Or how does it start? Start with like I a think piece it's like of a cloth? combo. Yeah, it's like a combo. Sometimes it's like, oh, I would really love to wear this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to do this. Sometimes it's like I see a print and like a fabric and I'm like, I think this could look so cool as like this. Wow. So it's always like a mix. Okay, whether it's like Megan Fox um, or like Lizzo, 
Halsey. Oh my God. The list goes on and on and on. How does it feel to dress some of the like coolest people and most talented people in the world and who's been your favorite? I think it's always been, it's always a special moment when you see it because you're like, wow, like, like this person likes my work and that's, you know, that's, that's great to see. Um, but sometimes it's also just like, I think some of the m- even more special moments too are also when you just see someone on the street wearing it. The other day I was like at ground support for coffee and this girl walked out and she was wearing this like tonal jean pant of mine Whoa. and she literally walked out and she went the other way and <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I like, took a picture because I was like, she's like wearing my pants. <laughs> like she's actually wearing my pants. She's like going to the coffee shop in my pants and I was like, wow. Like, that's so cool. Or, like, it's so exciting for me when I, like, go to a party and I see a girl in, like, my dress. And I'm like, wait, that's my dress. <laughs> oh, my I God. That. Kim. Yeah. It's like, that's that's some really crazy stuff sometimes. I'm like, wow, they actually are wearing, like, what I made. Unreal. This entire summer, we've been working on this collaboration with um, Jordan Brand. And it was so much fun. We went to the Portland office to see, like, to the Nike campus. Mm-hmm. Super cool love to see like their story and how they were built um we went to the michael jordan building um and then we we basically it was a collaboration with like the WNBA supporting like one player you were matched with one and it was like building that relationship with them and then also having this like this relationship between jordan brand and kim shui with the athlete so we were doing like her looks for like the tunnel locks wow um and so that was really cool. I'd never worked with, like, an athlete before. I know. So, I mean, there was this one image that I loved where, like, it's from behind and she's, like, she's posing, but she's so muscular. Wow. It's, like, so actually strong and sexy, right? Mm-hmm. And that's so, like, I love what that that image says. What else can we expect from Kim Shui in the future? Like, what's coming up? I think lots of stuff. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know... I'm trying to work on next season already. So Yeah, what is that like by the way? When how stressful is it for designers to have a show? Yeah, I mean I think people would, would be surprised how stressful it is. Yeah. Especially like the month leading up to it, because there's so much pressure and it's like, you know, we're still like a small team, mm-hmm. right? So there's so much stuff that I need to like think about and like this season we were filming the whole thing too. So wow. there was a camera with me the whole time that yeah. was like I had to be on, right? Mm-hmm. So it was just, it was so intense. Mm-hmm. Um, and the level of stress is insane. But I think I love it. You know, like, it's like, I love what I do. So, like, that's just part of it. Speaking of shows, yeah, you're a designer that really prioritizes having a diverse yeah. lineup. Yeah. You know, it was actually just, it just came natural. Like, if you look at my first season ever, mm-hmm. even you look at V-Files, mm-hmm. you look at the first, like, my first show, solo show, was like in this makeshift like makeup studio in Chelsea Market. Wow! And it was like in the they were it was the only studio that would give me a space for free. Wow! So I I think it was called like it was a, com- a cosmetics brand in in Chelsea Market. And my friend helped introduce me to that venue, and they were like, we can have we can like host you for that day, mm-hmm. and. The setup of everything was all like, you know, I'm diverging right now. But it was the first show, though. The first show, it was like, it was like from this show to also Grand shutting down Grand Central Terminal. Yeah, can we just say their last show was literally in, which was a special (laughs) and like with actual production, it was Mm -hmm. like really special for me to see because that first show I did was so crazy. Like we had, but it was. I mean, if you look at photos, it looks fine. But like, if you were there, it was so crazy. Like, everything was kind of falling apart. But if you look at the models, they're actually all just, like, it was just diverse from the beginning. Not even intentionally. It was just, like, beauty that I saw that everyone was... Different beauty being represented, which is just something that subconsciously even, like, became a part of the storyline, too. Wow. Yeah. Like, seeing different people that you might not normally see in a show or, like, on a runway and, like, showing that beauty. One thing also that most people, you know, may or may not know, actually is you kind of have these parts of your own culture that you incorporate into this, like the yeah. designs. Yeah, like, and I think some parts are more subtle than others, but yeah. like, I love putting like Chinese cultural elements in it. Mm-hmm. I love, there's always also like an Italian element in it, but mm-hmm. just 
maybe you don't see it like because you grew up in Italy friends. yeah that's the thing yeah so there is like a, a subtle influence when too. I go to Italian restaurants with Kim she literally like talks in an Italian accent I'm just like <laughs> Like, literally talks in Italian, <laughs> but, like, with the accent, not just Italian. I was like, <laughs> remember the first time that happened? I was like, really? I was like, hey, I why do you know that. Italian? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so funny. People are like, oh, you're from Italy? You don't look Italian? Bro. <laughs> so funny. But, yeah, I think there's always that mix. There's that collage element in it. That's crazy. Yeah. Kim, I was at a, um, we were at that, what was that event, the alcohol event? Oh my god, that was crazy. And I kid you not, there were like a few people that came up to her and were fangirling, um, which was pretty dope to watch. Like, as your friend, sometimes I literally forget that you, like, you know, like I, just, I know Kim, but then just like the Kim shoey part. Well, I'm always surprised too because I don't actually really post like m- many photos of me. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know if like someone, <laughs> like, I'm like, how do you recognize me? Like, I don't post anything of myself. <laughs> But yeah. they do, and there were some. There were a few girls that came up to you, and they were yeah. like, "Hey, like I'm an aspiring designer." Yeah, I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a week or two ago, and like, how do you do it? Yeah. So for aspiring designers, yeah, what is some advice that you have? I think, um, so first, it's always special when someone you know comes up to me to say hi or something. I think that you know makes me feel like, oh wow, like that's I'm like you know there's some sort of impact and that's that's really special and i think for an aspiring designer probably it's like important to really hone in on what makes you really different and Mm -hmm. what makes you special but i think one of the most important things is like i think it's like this idea of like drafts right because each time you do something it might not be the right one but you kind of have to figure out you have to learn like what's working what's not working if it's working then do more of that and then you have to test right it's almost like you got to trial a few things like i think when i started i was like doing outerwear uh-huh. like really expensive out i priced it really high because like i was making it myself i didn't know how to i didn't know how to market it the right way too and also how to price like pricing was difficult i had small quantities mm-hmm. so like you know if you don't make larger quantities that that drop is going to be more expensive right mm-hmm. So I had to learn, like, what really was working and what resonated with people. So it's really, like, kind of trying things out, too. And then seeing what works and whatever works to do more or, like, expand on that. Wow. Yeah. But I think, yeah, now there's the internet. Like, there's so much opportunity. You can really make it happen if you want. You did a um, collab with Gary Vee as well. Yeah, you know, that's how that happened. That happened through a DM. Mm -hmm. That happened on a DM. The internet. The the internet. internet. Um, and on like my private account that has like just a couple of thousand, like I was like just a couple of thousand followers, like, yeah. like not really, like, unless you, you know it? me, like how do you find it? Mm-hmm. Right. But it came through that and it was like, got the DM and then day of, we like went for drinks with his girlfriend. Wow. Like day of. So it was crazy. It was such a crazy day. Cause I was like, I listened to his podcast. I loved, mm-hmm. I love his podcast. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh my God, like that's pretty crazy. And then it just happened from there and he's someone who talks a lot about manifestation something i wanted to get on topic with you yeah was about manifestation i've heard you you know talk a lot about how you manifested your life and your dreams and are you a spiritual person and also what does manifestation mean to you yeah i think like probably when i started i didn't even know what manifestation meant yeah but then later on i'm like wait this actually is a thing like you really can man like i think you really can manifest things you just need to know what your what your end goal is sort of you know you need to have that vision board of like in your mind of like what you want and i think like you have to set those that you have to set that as high as possible like your ultimate dream right and i think you can make there's always going to be obstacles but getting there you really have to envision it and you really have to think you have to see everything as you already having those things right so I think it's I think it's really a thing you can really make it and I also think that positive thinking makes such a big difference like how you think really determines like how something goes how something rolls out too you know like you can always see something in a different way it's always kind of created in your mind right like your reality is sort of created through how you think and how 
you know, you see things. Mm -hmm. So that really determines. Like, also, I think one of the biggest things is, like, do you believe you can do it? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that belief in yourself, like, how are you going to have that big vision of what you want, right? It's like, I think it's like, what impact do you want to make? Like, how do you want to be remembered in, like, the, like, you know, in the world? Can we talk about how we have, like, the same birthday? So, yeah, we do have the same birthday. And th my favorite thing about you is that you're actually, like, a positive ray of light. Oh, I can. Yeah, you're always, like, the way you think, too, you're always here to uplift people. Oh, I It's true. Yeah, you're always here to uplift other people. We're both cancers. Yeah, but, like, in an authentic way. That's what I noticed. And I was like, this girl's, like, legit. Like, she actually... <laughs> like she's actually she's actually real and like she uplifts other people Good. and I think that's what's that's what's special right girl you made I'm me like, emotional my <laughs> oh my god she's <laughs> Kim's taking over the world people if you haven't seen it already and what can we expect from you in five years where do you see this brand going I mean ide ideally I think you know I look up to you know, I feel like having not just one thing, but being able to expand into product care category. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely like to make, be able to have my brand make a larger impact on the world. So I think in many different categories, I want to kind of expand out onto that too. So, you know, I do hope that I can reach, you know, I mean, Avira Wang is great you know, Michael, Kors, like an ethnic Michael Kors, mm -hmm. you know, where it's mm -hmm. that widespread, I think mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I hope that my brand can build out, like, in, in terms of impact, a really larger one in, on the world to, to uplift for other women um, and really, you know, be remembered. This is like a young freaking woman right here. <laughs> and look at everything that's going on right now. Could you imagine, Kim, and like, could you imagine when we're like old ladies, what we'll have to look back on? I know. I mean, same to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl. Well, everybody, this is the Kim Shui. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Looking Thank hot you as hell.